as well as uh, you know the 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 um, uh, forensic investigation report. So far, we have not received anything from them, any of them. So, what what is the status? Um, because I mean, we certainly cannot, you know, proceed only with the presentation of of uh, DPWI, and and not that of of Department of Defence, and specifically the forensic report, which has been uh, you know part of our planning and our program for quite some time. I just want to get clarity whether you've got any information on that. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's look at the agenda first. Um, we'll then deal with the apologies. And I will try to address uh, that item when we come to uh, item number three, uh, Mr. Murray. Um, all right, this is sure. the agenda for the meeting. Um, so besides uh, preliminaries one and two, uh, we have uh, a briefing by the Department of, uh, by the Defense Ministry, uh, the Public Works, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. And the Department of uh, Defense on the forensic uh, report on the one military hospital. So one yeah one military uh, hospital hospital refurbishment uh, program, and um, also look at the way forward. And then uh, fourthly, it's a, a briefing by uh, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure on the upgrading of section headquarters building for the SNDF um, along the border. And then the discussion after which will then deal with the with, with the minutes, right? <clears throat> Maybe let's let's look at the uh, apologies. Um, do you have apologies, um, uh, Miss McLaughlin? Um, <clears throat> from the member side, Chair, I don't have any apologies. Um, the only apologies I have is from the minister. Of military of defense and military veterans, and also the secretary of defense, who's also with the minister attending state visits to the West African region. Thank you, Chair. All right. So we are saying on the side of the members, uh, they don't have any apology to record. Yes, Chair. No apologies. I didn't receive anything from the member side. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Right, let me welcome uh, the Department of uh, Defense. Um, I know it's led by the acting um, SECDEF in the name of Dr. Kamede. I don't know who uh, is part of a delegation. Uh, Dr. Kamede, can we hear if you are present and please announce uh, the members of your delegation, please? Uh, good, good evening, Chair, and good evening, Honourable Members of the Joint Committee. Yes, I'm in the meeting, um, and with me, uh, I have uh, Major General De Villiers, um, who is Deputy Joint Op Chief Joint Operations, and she is um, the one who attends all meetings that have to do with uh, border uh, safeguarding. And then uh, Mr. Mutumi, of course, who's um, the advisor to um, the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans. And I was ex and Reggie Marini, who's our parliam parliamentary officer. <laughs> We might be joined later, we might be joined by a, a Major General Lidwaba who is responsible for, for facilities. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I also noticed that uh, the Chief of Logistics and then in the meeting, and uh, General Mbuli, uh, Chief Lock. Yes, I, uh, I, Chair, again, Chair, yes, uh, uh, all the chiefs, 
uh, thank you, Chair. All the chiefs of services are in one meeting dealing with um, the succession plans in the military. Uh, I think what you're seeing as CLOC is um, uh, Major General Lidwaba, who's responsible for facilities, who okay. the chief is instructed to join the meeting. Nice, fine. No, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I welcome the team from uh, the Department of Defense. Um, yes, sir. Uh, who is that, General Idwaba? Uh, excuse me, it's uh, Major General uh, S.P. Zobu, the Deputy CLO. Uh, I've been requested by CLO to send in for him. With me, I'm with uh, Major General Idwaba, who is the GOC of the Defense Commission. Uh, thank you, uh, Chief Joseph, and uh, Chief Joseph. Oh, thank you very much, uh, uh, General. All right. Um, thank you very much, and you're all welcome. On the list of the of public works and uh, infrastructure, uh, I've, I have the delegation uh, list before me. Is the Minister uh, Patricia Delile? Welcome, uh, Minister. She is accompanied by uh, the Acting Director General, uh, Matthias Fazel, and uh, the DDG Real Estate Investment Services, uh, Sabah Suban, the Chief Director, uh, User Demand Management, Basi Hosiani, the Director, Key Account Management, Defense and Social Cluster, uh, Krishni Nadison, uh, town uh, planning section, Malusi uh, Ganiso, uh, director, user demand management, uh, Pamanda Ngobo, and the chief director, uh, construction projects management, Babi Mekwa, and uh, director, construction project management, Jabulile Mabaso. Uh, Acting Deputy Director General, uh, Facilities Management, Gosana Gubega, uh, Facilities Management, Nishi Sharma, um, Acting Deputy Director General, SCM, Henry Isaacs, and um, Director, Labor Relations, Guiana Makubele. That's the delegation that is accompanying uh, the minister. Minister, you are welcome. I was greeting you. Uh, good evening, minister. You are muted, minister. Okay. Good Good evening, honorable chairperson, honorable members. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, I just have an apology on behalf of the acting DJ, MTS Faisal. Uh, he had a bereavement in his family this morning, and so he had apologized for the meeting now. Okay. Chairperson, we are here tonight to give uh, this evening uh, to about two issues. Uh, the, the one is about the REM project, and the other one is about the borderline fences and, and any related matters to that. But I just want to bring to the attention of the Honorable Chair and members that uh, I only got hold of the actual forensic report about two days ago. And making inquiries from uh, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, I was informed uh, that Public Works uh, received the report in September of 2021. Uh, also informed that Public Works and Infrastructure looked at the report and requested further information from the Department of Defense, and the report came back to them in November of 2021. Now, from what I can read, Chairperson, that uh, the forensic investigation was, uh, um, it was uh, started by the, the Department of Defense. And uh, it's very important that, uh, because this report goes back to 2001, uh, 2014, it's quite, it's quite historical stuff that's in there. 
So I then, this, uh, when I had my briefing with the DPWI this morning, I made an inquiry to find out whether the actual report from the Department of Defense had been shared with the chairperson of the committee and whether it had been shared with the, the, the committee. And, and we, uh, my, my, my parliamentary officer was able to establish that no, the report has not been sent to members. And um, I said, look, I will raise it tonight with the chairperson because I think it's important that when, uh, as Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, we are ready to respond to the honorable members tonight, but it will be, uh, and in my view, and this is my, my, my humble opinion, uh, much better that if the report can be made available to honorable chairperson and to the honorable members by the Department of Defense, and then uh, if maybe we can discuss the, the content and the recommendations out of that report when both the defense and public works are, are in the same room. Now, I'm happy to hear that the, there are members of the, the military in the committee tonight, but there is just this one concern that I have that the report has not been shared um, with the committee. And I hear Honorable Marie is also raising, raising it tonight, but I will leave it in your capable hand, uh, Chairperson, to make a ruling on, on, on how we, we proceed. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. That is in order. Right, colleagues, um, let me invite Dr. Kamede. Uh, the Minister has um, uh, introduced the matter. Uh, she will indicate where the report is and what is there uh, in their represent. Sorry, what they are going to uh, present today. The idea was to for to the meeting today to present uh, the report and then hear your responses, uh, Minister. Let's hear what they have to say, um, uh, Dr. Kamede. That will then answer uh, uh, Mr. Mare's question as well. Okay. Thank you, Chair, again. Um, the, the, I wrote, I'm acting uh, uh, as uh, uh, the SECDEF is away um, on international engagement with the president and the minister. The, I wrote to both the uh, uh, um, chairs of the Joint Standing Committee that the report has not been presented to internal structures of defense. And I requested um, in my letter that we postpone or we defer the presentations until the sector is back in the country and until the report has been processed through the structures of defense chair. Okay, now let's, let, let, let's start with the process. When was the report, when was the uh, uh, Forensic Investigation commissioned? Uh, when did the department, uh, by whom was it commissioned? When was the report uh, uh, received? And uh, what is the status of that report? If you could answer those questions. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, what I know, uh, well, it was a commission by the Department of Defense, and I know that the report uh, is with the SECDEF and the chief, uh, but uh, in my knowledge, it has not been through uh, the structures. Um, the Minister of Defense has not been briefed yet. Uh, in my knowledge uh, about the report. So it will have to go through the structures, including briefing to the minister before it is then presented to uh, parliamentary committees. You, you have not answered, uh, uh, you have answered part of my questions. And uh, I asked when was, it, when was it commissioned and by whom uh, was the, 
uh, report uh, uh, commissioned? Chair, um, I can't give you the exact date because uh, my land function is outside this mandate, but I know that it was commissioned because we all know by the Department of Defense. I know that there is a report and I know that it is um, in the meantime with the executive and the chief and are waiting to be presented uh, or briefed uh, to the minister. But uh, acting sector, you knew that you were coming to this meeting and um, uh, this item was on the agenda and you shared the agenda of this meeting uh, weeks um, ago uh, and we are acting today. Uh, isn't that um, <clears throat> as part of your responsibility was just to familiarize yourself at least uh, with that information. Yes, you are right, Che. I did familiarize myself with the substance of the information like I've indicated, but maybe on my part, I did not check when was it commissioned and the exact but I know it was commissioned by the department. It is, is it possible to get us that information? Um, uh, I'm sure it's just a call away. Uh, when was it commissioned? Yes. Uh, when was the report finalized and submitted uh, to ever commissioned it? And, mm -hmm. uh, and what is the current status of, of the report? We had requested that report be shared with the Department of Public Works um, uh, and, and Infrastructure. I'm happy to hear from the minister just a while ago that that happened in September. Um, uh, so you complied uh, with, with that. Mm -hmm. But that the report had not been taken through the internal structures. I don't understand what you mean. Maybe other members uh, of the committee will, uh, I mean, I, you know, are able to understand that. All right, <coughs> I can see a hand. Uh, Mr. Murray, your hand is up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, this is embarrassing. I must oh, so, so, I'm sorry, but, but, but it, before Mare, can you, in the meantime, um, uh, uh, Dr. Kamede, uh, just uh, get just uh, uh, get that information for us, so that you understand uh, for how long you have been sitting with this information uh, since um, you received it from whoever uh, conducted the investigation. Uh, Mr. Mare? Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I must say, it's, it's actually embarrassing. Um, this is now becoming, seems to be a norm. We have had the same situation yesterday as well. And I mean, uh, the SecDef and the minister knew about this meeting long time ago, even before the last, this terms program uh, was, was finalized. We were talking about the, the forensic uh, report. The fact that Minister DeLille's department already got it in September, how on earth can a, a Department of Defense forensic investigation report, obviously it is finalized, otherwise it wouldn't have been made available to the Department of Public Works and, and Infrastructure. How on earth can that happen if it is not gone through the internal processes as the, as the uh, acting sector, I was now saying? I mean, that, that just doesn't make sense. That, that indicates to very, very bad planning, very, very bad management. And, um, you know, they are not honest with us as a, as a Joint Standing Committee on Defense. We, we, we are committed to do this work. Um, but I'm afraid to say that at the moment, we don't really get the kind of support that we, that we have requested uh, and that we have minuted in our minutes. Uh, and it's very, very embarrassing um, because what is the purpose of, of interacting with the Department of, of, of uh, Public, public works and, in, and, and infrastructure, uh, we can only do it based on what they tell us. But from our own department, we've got absolutely nothing. And that is totally unacceptable. That is, in my opinion, very, very bad and poor discipline. That's not what we expect from the Department of Defense and the South African National Defense Force. Leaders are supposed to show um, uh, discipline. And this is, this is very, very bad discipline. So, so we've got actually got nothing to talk about. 
Um, and, and I mean, this is supposed to be very, very important. If I read through the presentation and we will listen now to Minister De Lille, um, there there's indications that, that senior officials of both departments must be held accountable. And, and our department says, Dr. Gomeri says, sorry, I can't talk about that. I mean, if, you, if Dr. Gomeri cannot talk about it, why is she acting SECDEF? You know, what, what is the, then she's not acting SECDEF, then she's a, a personal assistant who's, who's only mandated to do certain things. This, this, this is totally unacceptable, very unprofessional, and we expect from others to, to, to support us and from Minister Delos' department. This is totally unacceptable. And I, I ask you, Chairperson, that we have to act. I've asked you yesterday as well with regards to the, the ill discipline yesterday. And I'm asking you again that we have to write a strong letter to the Minister and the Secretary of Defence. They cannot treat us this disrespectful. I, I absolutely despise this. This is unacceptable. Thank you. All right. Okay, colleagues. Um... It, it, let's 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 not uh, uh, just enter into this discussion. I, I just want to see to check how serious uh, Dr. Kamede is. I just want to establish the seriousness on their part when they say uh, the report has not been taken through the internal structures, and um, uh, but we we'll only get that understanding if they give us the information. When was the forensic report, the forensic concluded, and the report thereof uh, submitted um, to the other the chief of the of the South African Defence Force, whom I was told she he commissioned the report, or the sector? It was the sector. Uh, we are waiting for that information. In the meantime, colleagues, I know their hands. May I ask uh, uh, Velem just to summarize the issues on REM? So that um, for the Minister of uh, Public Works, who's coming into, into this uh, 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 discussion with us for the first time, uh, so that uh, we would also be refreshing our memories as well. There's a background uh, to, to, to this thing. So I'm asking that we just reflect on it a bit. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, let me just. Uh... Sorry, I'm going to just ask the host to um, allow me to share my screen, please. The host, may you share the, may you enable her to do the presentation? I've done it, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's working. Um, find, uh, Okay, Chair, um, is it visible on your side, the screen? Yes, yes it is visible. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Honourable Members and Minister. I'm Valadam Janssen van Rensburg. I'm the uh, researcher for the Joint Standing Committee of Defence. I will try to keep it just short, but um, suffice to say that uh, this issue has been on the radar of Parliament um, for a long time, uh, and this document that I prepared for members that was distributed uh, to, to members of the committee beforehand just uh, outlines a little background to it. I will briefly go through it. Um, it refers to the RAM project at one military hospital and the delays in this project that commenced in 2006 already. Um, and it's important to note this delays and the impact that these delays have uh, on the uh, South African military health services, given their insufficient budget. And um, it's just interesting to note that in 2019, when this committee visited, um, visited two military hospitals in Cape Town, then the SAMs noted that they have an inability to adequately protect health facilities owing to structural deficiencies. And secondly, they also noted the continued deterioration of health facilities compounded by developing technology gaps. So that's just as a background. Um, just as a, a recent history of what Parliament has been doing uh, regarding one military hospital, there was an oversight visit uh, by, this, by the Portfolio Committee of Defence and Military Veterans in 2006 uh, to one military hospital. 
Um, and there it was indicated that some departments of the hospital were scaled down due to the ramp uh, project um, and that there was a lack of some specialized medical professionals such as oncologists, radiologists, uh, which was exacerbated by the, by the ramp project, um, which, uh, which have made some theaters unavailable and some professionals felt that they couldn't carry out their functional functions professionally. Sorry, uh, sorry, in... sorry, can I correct one thing? Yes, Jeff. The, the visit by the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, or, or rather by the Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Ver Veterans was in 2016. In 2016. And you briefed yes. about the project that started in 2006. You 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 confused the date a bit there. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, Jim, that's that's correct. This uh, this the the oversight visit was in 2016 about the project that started in 2006. Um, this yeah, it's just to pr provide some background and also to state that the ramp project by then already um, resulted in some medical professionals leaving the hospital because they felt that they couldn't. Uh, fulfill and, and exercise their professional careers uh, to the full extent at the hospital due to a lack of facilities. And this, of course, resulted in outsourcing, uh, and which has increased significantly in recent years due to the unavailability of services at the hospital, which means a lot of services are being outsourced to the private sector at a very high cost. I think it's also important to note what that the Defence Force Service Commission has made observations uh, in this regard, um, and they, for example, made observation that protected maintenance and refurbishment projects uh, results in uh, in that the full capacity of hospital facilities cannot be used, causing extensive outsourcing to private facilities. Uh, then the Joint Standing Committee of Defence conducted the oversight visit in on the 27th of November 2020. Um, this committee went to the to one military hospital, uh, specifically regarding ramp. Um, it was uh, indicated Major, uh, Major General Lidwaba explained that the ramp started in 2006 and terminated in 2015, and this was due to disputes between the DOD and the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure with regards to the projects that led to the DOD taking over the first floor project together with the DPI appointed consultants. So he explained that shift uh, of, in the first floor management uh, to the uh, Defense Works Formation. Um, they also spoke about the outsourcing of services, which continued to, to increase in recent years. Uh, following the oversight visit, the committee made certain observations. Firstly, um, they observed that the ramp requires an, around another 1 billion ramp to be completed. Um, and they questioned, members questioned whether the technology that was acquired would still have value by the time that this project has, previous, uh, has been completed. And this was a previous concern raised by the committee as well, where there was acquisition of certain equipment, um, X-ray equipment and so forth, that could not be installed because the, the, the uh, first floor was not completed. And that would result, of course, in these equipment becoming um, obsolete uh, when they reach the end of their life cycle. Uh, the committee also observed the first floor of the hospital where the pharmacy should be and noted that there's no progress on the uh, construction of the first floor. Furthermore, in terms of the RAB project, uh, one of the main concerns that was expressed by the DOD during this visit uh, was that DPW has only spent around 41% of the funds allocated to them to service the DOD over the past five years. This, they said, despite attempts by the DOD to try and manage the services that DPWI render, uh, but who continues as they did without any apparent consequence man management or punitive measures. This was uh, stated by the Department of Defense during this visit. And then in the, in the official Joint Standing Committee of Defense report, the following recommendations were made um, regarding RAMP uh, and the, uh, related projects um, that were found to be unacceptable uh, and of specific concern that the committee pointed out the delays in the first floor um, in the completion of the first floor. Uh, there was also a recommendation, um, uh, sorry, the previous recommendation um, that one billion rand be required to complete the ramp, uh, ramp project should be ring fenced uh, and so that this pro uh, project can be prioritized. Secondly, uh, deviation for ramp conclusion. Uh, then all, the DOD also uh, is noted that they're in the process of applying for a deviation from national treasury to accommodate the change scope 
the DOD and National Treasury should fast track this engagement and report immediately to the committee on the outcome of this engagement. Uh, then, Chair, to follow up on this, on this uh, oversight visit that the committee held, uh, the Joint Standing Committee of Defense had a special meeting on 3 June of this year uh, regarding the RAMP project. One of the key discussion points of this meeting revolved around the forensic investigation into the RAMP uh, project that was ordered by the Minister of Defense. During this meeting, the Secretary for Defense confirmed that the forensic investigation was complete. This was in June already, and that the, uh, at the end of the previous year, and that the report makes certain recommendations. So this is from the from the minutes of the previous meeting, um, where it was stated that the forensic report was finished by uh, the end of the previous year, uh, 2020. Uh, regarding the, the meeting, I'll just skip a little bit to some of the uh, factors relating to the RAM project. Um, firstly, in terms of expenditure by, by uh, DPWI between 2006 and 2015, various phases of the project were conducted, including design, mechanical and electrical installation, building works, civil infrastructure, and the uh, appointment of a management firm. In total, over the eight-year period, uh, according to what the Department of Defense said, the DPWI spent 497 million rand on the one military hospital project. Uh, furthermore, expenditure by the DOD in the subsequent years on the first floor, uh, they spent around 52 million rand uh, on the first floor project. Um, one of the other things that came up, and this was also observed by members during the oversight visit, was the issue around the leaking roofs and the problems, um, the lack of progress reported on this issue, uh, where according to the uh, DOD, um, they communicated several times to DPW on this issue, but uh, without any success in getting the leaking roofs properly uh, fixed. Uh, the D DOD also um, noted that given, the, given that the ramp largely resides with the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, the DOD cannot implement consequence management and can only raise these issues with, uh, with the department itself and with the parliamentary committees. So they express frustration in that regard. Um, and then officially, just lastly, Chair and members, from the, from the minutes of that meeting we had, uh, the following was decided. Uh, the, following, the, the committee made the following recommendations during the meeting related to one military hospital. And I think this uh, relates to this discussion with, that was just held. The committee resolved that it should be furnished with an executive summary and the full forensic report on, on the ramp at one military hospital in the third week of September 2021. This should include the findings of both the report of the uh, um, um, MMTT and those of the forensic report. The ministry should indicate uh, confirmation of its availability for that meeting. The ministry should be invited to the meeting that would be dealing with the forensic report. Uh, and lastly, that the committee will revisit one military hospital. So that was a timeline that was provided uh, during September, uh, during the September meeting for the submission of the uh, forensic report. Chair, I think I'll leave it there. Those are the, just the background and the discussions. And uh, I think suffice to say that this has been on the parliamentary radar for quite a while. Um, and uh, hopefully this gives a nice background to take the matter forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, um, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Willem van Rensberg, our uh, committee researcher. All right, uh, Dr. Kamete, uh, can you indicate when was it commissioned and by when uh, and when was the report received? Uh, uh... Uh, I can't provide that information. I'm trying to get it, but for now, I, I'm still struggling to get information. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Let's look at the, the hands. Right. And yeah, the, the, minister's hand, hand. Minute, the minister's hand is up. Let me just uh, give, I know Mr. Raja, your hand was up before the minister, but let me take the minister before I come to Mr. Raja. Raja. Yes, Chairperson, I, I might be able to help. Uh, the uh, the report that I have been going through for the past two days, um, the it's called the final executive summary report, and that was given by the company Abacus, 
It was given to the Department of Defense on the 1st of December, 2020. That is the copy that I have with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the 1st of December, 2020, and today is the 3rd of December, 2021. All right, Mr. Reiter. Chair, sure, thank you very much. Now, look, I also wanted to just come out in support of Mr. Moray's comments as well. You know, we need to go back, Chairperson, to the um, the reason that this committee exists. We, we, we're neither a standing committee nor a select committee. We're, we're a joint standing committee. Um, and our purpose is made very clear in our mandate. And, and one, one of the things that we are supposed to do is to look after the well-being of our troops and make sure that, that, that the troops are, are properly looked after. That, that's a core part of our mandate. Um, I think that, you know, Dr. Willem von Rensburg's, Jens von Rensburg's uh, introduction made it clear to us that this is a long outstanding issue. And the longer we leave it to fester, Mr. Chair, the longer it's a reflection on us as members of parliament not doing our jobs. Um, and we know what the public protectors had to say about parliament not doing their jobs and the, and the constitutional court has also weighed in on MPs not doing their jobs. Now, the importance of this issue is, 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 has been indicated and underlined. The fact that you know, the Minister of, of Public Works and, and Infrastructure could find time to be here in, in spite of having some difficulties herself in getting a, a information out of her department, I think it's acknowledged and appreciated. Our own minister is not here. We, we've yet to meet her since her appointment. Um, and of course, the department hasn't come forward with the information that we need. It's beyond embarrassing, Chair. This is now calling, causing us to, to need to take drastic action as MPs, and I'm asking for your leadership on that. Thank you, Chair. I need your mic, Chair. Oh, thanks. Mr. Mafanya, I recognize your hand. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chair and, and the Minister. Uh, Chair, I think I, I echo the same sentiments as Mr. Ryder and uh, Mr. Murray. But the reality is that uh, all the time when we had to get information, we had to drag it instead of being voluntarily being given to us all the time. And uh, really, it has reflected bad on us as members of parliament in this committee, whereby we, 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 know we run into cycles all the time whenever we need to, to get clarity on matters that are quite pertinent. So the onus is on us as the committee that uh, in different entities of the DOD, including the DOD itself, we always struggle to get proper information and at some point, you chair, you will say, guys, can we just be open and be faithful and be truthful to us? Because from time to time now, we are working as investigators, more than that we have to uh, go according to what the mandate requires of us. So I, I, I would pledge with all uh, the colleagues that we need to look at our own different strategy of having to make inroads and come to terms with the reality that we are failing now and not because of our own making because of uh, in, uh, hesitance on the part of members, the generals and everybody else who's going to give us information that is required. So I, I think we need to, to do something that will be of help to us because it is indeed quite embarrassing and it's unacceptable. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, colleague. Um, all right, I don't see any, oh, Ms. Brickers. Thank you, Chair. Chair, uh, I think I agree with you that uh, you must familiarize yourself before you came to a meeting. And Chair, I think the department received our program well in advance. So it is really unacceptable uh, that we must sit in this uh, uh, problem now. And time and again, we speak about the communication and the problem of communication from the department to this committee. So we really need chair to do something about it. Thank you. 
Thank you. All right, colleagues, we will come back to, to this issue um, after the minister is um, addressed. Uh, chairperson, chairperson, with your indulgence, this, just, just one thing that I just want to make sure while we're on this point. Um, I, can Mr. I President, just, yes, sir. Mr. We'll come back to the issue. Let, let's okay. not delay okay. the matter. Let, let's okay. allow, let's, let's, okay. let's allow the minister no to, to present okay. and then come back to it on, on the way forward now. All right, Minister, uh, you understand our pre predicament and uh, you are in the meeting. Uh, okay, you have your part to transact with us. Let's invite you to transact with us on your part to present Thank your. You. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, certainly, we can do so. Um, in the absence of the acting uh, DG, um, our, our presentation will be led by Mr. Adam Mtumbeni, who is the DDG for Intergovernmental Relations. He will be doing the presentation, Chairperson. And thereafter, we will be, we, 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 we can take questions and advice uh, from, from members. Um, through you, Chairperson, Mr. Mtumbeni can present. Thank you so much, uh, Minister. Um, Mr. Mtumbeni, you are welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, Minister and uh, colleagues. Minister indicated my name is Adam Tomben, the Divisional Head for Intergovernmental Relations. I'm standing for our D acting DG, Mr. F uh, MTS Faison. And uh, with me, I have colleagues that will assist in the presentation. From my side, I will make an overview and thereafter allow my colleagues to come with the content. But what we need to indicate, uh, Chair President, is that uh, in terms of uh, committee's request, we were requested to deal with three areas. And I'm happy that uh, the first area, which deal with uh, forensic audit report, has been dealt with, so we won't dwell on that. So what we'll do from our side, we start from uh, section B, where we, we deal with the issues of uh, way forward, to restore one military hospital, and in so doing, uh, limiting the need for outsourcing. We'll deal with that. That aspect will be dealt with by my colleagues, uh, Mr. Haynes, who's one of our managers from ODG, dealing with uh, strategic support. Uh, the latter part, you know, it will be section C, which deal with the issues of uh, borderline infrastructure solutions for the integrated borderline patrol roads, ICT solutions, and progress made to date. So that section C is the one that will be dealt with by my colleague DDG for real estate investment services race, and will also be assisted by the colleagues uh, from CPM. CPM, which is our construction pro uh, project management. So that's how we organize ourselves um, a chairperson. And the minister will give us a guidance uh, in terms of dealing with the issues that came uh, in your introduction, where the chairperson requested us to also share some information on JC barrier, a borderline. I should think minister will guide us on how to deal with that. We do have a background to it, but at the end will be advised how to deal with that matter. So that's how we arrange ourselves, uh, a chairperson. The presentation was circulated and uh, I'll allow my colleagues to start in that order. And uh, from my side, I will do the last slide, which deals with, with recommendations. So okay. without further ado, I'll request my colleague, uh, Mr. Haynes, to deal with, with section B. Mr. Chobeni, I don't know why you want to start with section B and, uh, and not section A. Can you go back to section A? Thanks, Chairperson. We can go to section A. I should think what we'll do as a department it won't be to give uh, the details which uh, members are looking for. It will be just to articulate departmental stance on the matter. And we, we felt that in terms of section A is the one which our uh, user department, in this case DOD, was supposed to kickstart to report uh, on the uh, forensic uh, audit report. 
and from there we deal with our part as a department. So the fact that the report was not shared with the, the committee, it also a limitation from our side to deal with our part. I should think that's the rationale. No, we, we do have your report, uh, Mr. Mtombeni. I request you start from section A. We'll do likewise, Chairperson. Thanks for that indulgence. So Mr. Haynes will start from uh, section A to deal with, with the stance as a department in terms of uh, forensic audit report and come to the issues of uh, uh, restoration of a uh, one military hospital. And thereafter, Ms. Suben will deal with the latter part, which is section C. Over to you, colleagues. Thank you. Mr. Haynes, you, come, you can come through. Good evening, sorry. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Honorable Chair uh, and uh, Honorable Members, uh, Minister, um, and, and, and colleagues from, from uh, Defence. Um, my name is Heinz Wurst. I'm from the, the Office of the Di Acting Director General in the Department of Public Works. Um, Chair, I have switched on my camera. I don't know if, if I'm audible and if, whether you, 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 you can see me. Um, you, you are audible and we can see the presentation on the screen. Okay. 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 Thank you, Chair. Um, um, Chairperson, I've I've seen a I've seen a message that uh, I think it's SABC that has requested that uh, people must put on the, the the cameras when they when they talk. Uh, just on our WhatsApp group, I've seen that. I don't know if you've seen that. No, I've not. Thank you very much for alerting me. Uh, I will request colleagues to set their video on. Uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I think that's what I tried explaining. I just restarted my computer, but my, my camera, for some reason, is, is, is not uh, allowing me to, it says the camera is not launched properly. Please check browser media permission settings. So if you, uh, if you, if you, uh, I can quickly uh, see if I can, um, just see if you indulge me. Um, see if I can. Ah, there I, I, I can see you. <laughs> I can see you clearly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, okay, Chair. So, so uh, the section A then. Um, I think, like the minister has um, basically uh, or, or already uh, uh, alluded to. The, the, the report that was commissioned by the Department of Defense um, uh, in, in, in 20, I think it was end of 2019, um, uh, which was finalized in, in, in 2020, was, del, uh, 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 was shared with the department um, in uh, September uh, 2021 as per one of the recommendations of the, re the report. Um, there were uh, further particulars were, were requested from the Department of Defense. Um, after discovering that the submission was was incomplete and and these outstanding information was received around about mid November in 2020, um, which is about half a month ago. So what the department uh, did then um, is obviously there are um, uh, DPW and uh, um, uh, DOD officials implicated in this. Uh, so the department um, basically subjected the report to um, our own internal uh, quality assurance to, to check the contents and the outcome of the report and whether it's credible to be admitted through our disciplinary processes. And this process has basically uh, uh, started um, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago and with the following implementation plan. So the department has uh, uh, approached the, the state attorney to assist with the appointment of, of councils to initiate the consequence management uh, disciplinary processes uh, against the implicated officials. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the, we hope that the, the final appointments of the presiding officer and the initiator will be done uh, before the, the end of January uh, 2022. So once the, uh, the, the presiding officer and the initiator uh, is appointed, they will be drafting the charges, which will obviously then be served on the implicated officials as, as soon as, as this is received. Um, and then um, the department hopes to, to to facilitate setting up the disciplinary hearings uh, before the end of the, the financial year. 
So um, Chair and, and, and Honourable Members, that, that's basically the departments uh, uh, after receiving the report, what the department uh, have been doing um, with regard to the recommendations and the findings of the report. Um, moving on then to the next slide, uh, Chair and Honourable Members, is uh, Section B. Um, so Section B looks at the way forward to restore uh, the one military hospital. And I think Dr. Van Rensburg has covered uh, most of, of, of the background. Um, uh, what is uh, very important though, is that the project started off as a ramp, a ramp project with an original completion date of 2019. But there were a lot of uh, changes and, 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 and scope creep and, um, um, you know, where the, uh, I think it, you know, mostly due to, to um, you know, the scoping that wasn't done adequately uh, to the point where um, the, the department uh, realized in 2009 that, that, that ramps, uh, ramp projects were, were not successful anymore. And the project were basically um, became an upgrading pro uh, uh, project with a completion date of, of 30 November 2010. There were some overruns on the contract and uh, uh, which was uh, allowed under the, and variations which, which could be allowed under the contract. But um, the, the additional scope uh, changes that, that were requested uh, from, from the Department of Defense could not be catered for within the provisions of the contracts um, and in line with the variation order. So the decision was made to register a completely new project um, uh, back in 2012. However, the, during the planning phase of this new project, on the request of the Department of Defense, the, minister at, the ministers at that time met and it was resolved that the, the, uh, the project, the refurbishment project be devolved to the Department of Defense to, to manage. Um, and uh, this was duly done by the, between the, the Director General at the time and the SECDEF at the time. Uh, uh, to, and the, the project was de devolved to the Department of DOD in, um, on 23 October uh, 2014. So on the next slide, uh, slide eight, the, the department's involvement currently uh, with one military uh, uh, hospital is basically that uh, a total facilities management contract uh, um, um, has been implemented for, for one military uh, hospital. Now this happened on 27 August 2020, and it's a three-year contract, uh, a 36-month contract, which uh, should conclude on the 27th of October 2023. Now, Chair and, and members, what is important to note here is that the, the, this total facilities management contract incorporates preventative and reactive maintenance and minor works in mechanical, electrical, building, heating, uh, HVAC, etc. This does not include or, or deal with the refurbishment project, which is a capital project, which is being dealt with uh, by uh, the Department of Defense since its uh, devolution to defense in 2014. Um, honorable Chair and, and, and honorable members, if uh, we go to the next slide then, which is, is uh, uh, section C, Chair, uh, through you, if I can hand over to my colleague, uh, DDG Suban, uh, who will brief the committee then on the the board offences and the the uh, upgrading of the, the section headquarters. Thank, Thank you, you Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, Chair Parsi, uh, just give me a second, one second. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, um, Honorable Minister, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members. Uh, I do have some challenges with my computer. Um, so, uh, uh, especially with the audio yeah. and, and the video. So, um, do forgive me if my camera is not uh, totally visible. Chairperson, um, I'll be uh, addressing the long-term uh, borderlines uh, infrastructure solution. Uh, as we are aware and we acknowledge that the state of the borderline infrastructure 
is in a really bad dilapidated state. And this includes uh, the fences and the patrol roads, as well as the ICT security system. Uh, and this is causing immense uh, problems, including, uh, you know, our, our borders are par porous. Uh, uh, in, that's causing illegal crossing, unauthorized movement of people, stolen goods, um, and, and uh, generally the poor state of our borders are impacting on our security. Now, uh, here we need to, to just reflect on the mandates of the various departments the one being the Department of Defense, whose responsibility and mandate it is to uh, secure the borders. And we'll get into a little bit more detail in the next slide. And then also the, the various other departments and entities and their role uh, within the border posts. So with the Department of Home Affairs, their lead department, um, within uh, the Border Management Agency. And the Border Management Act has been exempted to recently uh, in 2020. And uh, the Border Management Agency is required to coordinate infrastructure requirements for all user departments operating in the ports of entry environment in line with their strategic requirements. Um, the BMA is also uh, responsible for developing specifications uh, for the, the infrastructure requirements around the ports of entry. The Department of Defense, like we alluded to, is required to secure and protect the South African borders in line with Section 18 1D of the Defense Act. Uh, the DOD in this regard is also responsible for developing and submitting their user needs and specification or infrastructure requirements um, to support the development or the redevelopment of the border fences, patrol roads, and the ECHO ICT stations. The Department of Public Works in terms of Diyama, um, we're a custodian of the infrastructure, and we're also responsible to provide asset life cycle um, management and infrastructure solution based on these requirements that we get from the various uh, users. Supporting this um, is the Infrastructure Development Act of 1923, which provides for the facilitation and the coordination of public infrastructure development. Uh, and this has been transferred to the Minister of DPWI. The Act ensures that the infrastructure development is given priority in planning and management of, of infrastructure during all life cycle phases. Now we do have uh, the Infrastructure South Africa, ISA, that's been um, recently created to support administering infrastructure planning, packaging investment, and implementing strategic projects. And this um, project that we're going to present is considered one of the most strategic uh, projects of importance. And going forward, we'd like to, to engage ISA to help us to, to, um, to, to develop this and, and implement this project further. We can move to the next slide. So um, I think uh, the, 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 uh, the role of the, the Department of Agriculture within the borderline fencing is also important, especially in relevance to animal crossing um, and ensuring that we meet the standards as set out by the human rights commissions, et cetera. Now to facilitate uh, the relationships between the various departments, including the Department of Agriculture, but mainly with the Department of uh, Defense, we have um, uh, developed and, and submitted and a memorandum of understanding, which we've submitted in August to the Department of, of Defense. And we are awaiting Department of Defense who subsequently requested DPWI to convert the MOU to a protocol agreement. Um, this has been submitted to the DPWI um, and, and our legal services is, is looking and commenting on the document and we're hoping to get finalization by end of December. 
Um, so if, if uh, we can move on, thank you. Uh, Chairperson, there's also been a, a, a request of a previous engagement that we, we look at uh, the requirement for the upgrading uh, of the sections uh, of the headquarter buildings along the South African borders. Of specific importance is ensuring the functioning of the evolution and the water facilities. Um, so in this regard, uh, the DPWI together with the DOD, they in advanced uh, stages of finalizing the scope of repairs and renovation, uh, especially for nine evolution facilities and the installation of water tanks to ensure provisioning of, of, of water. Uh, the sketch plan approval has been obtained in October 2021, and DPWI is awaiting further instructions from the DOD in terms of uh, funding confirmation. Um, so, so this is where we are with, with that project, and uh, during a relocation meeting where funding is being uh, agreed upon, et cetera, the DPWI received a directive from the client that the, some of the projects will be put on hold. Uh, the DPWI then awaits further direction from the client to ensure that we, we uh, proceed uh, to the tender stage on these projects. The DDG projects is here. You can provide more uh, further direction on, on this required. Now, in terms of the fencing, um, the, the, the fence that we've put along in the RSA Zimbabwe border, the, known as the Bay Bridge, um, we've determined in terms of that particular fence, we've undertaken a condition assessment and it will not be feasible to, to, to basically repair or maintain that fence because it is being deemed not fit for purpose. Um, so if we could move on to the, the next uh, slide, because the, the Department of, uh, sorry, the DPWI has then looked at how we look at, or, or how do we configure a long-term solution. And as part of this particular project, which we've already started a uh, chairperson with, with the site clearance processes, we're looking at um, the, the long-term solution and to do that, the site clearance processes uh, for the following borderline has already transpired. That is the RSA Zimbabwe Mozambique borderline, the Lesotho, uh, the RSA Lesotho borderline, and the RSA Iswatini and Mozambique borderline. In total, it constitutes, I think, about 1,854 kilometers, and we're looking at this as phase one of our construction project. Thank you. Okay, so the land feasibility uh, has already been done um, and we've registered uh, servitudes uh, already and the proclamation of patrol roads uh, along the RSA borderline in order to, to replace the existing borderline fences. So this has been accordingly marked out and determined in where we need to, to, to register servitudes and acquire land but this will also be supported by the needs assessment, et cetera. The land feasibility and the due diligence report um, has also been done. And while we commission these land feasibility and site feasibilities, we've also requested that at that particular stage, we get um, uh, some best practice international solutions to come through, especially with the ICT uh, eco stations because uh, Chairperson, not all of the solution is going to be uh, hard infrastructure in terms of the fence. In some instances where you cannot install fences because of the land gradient, et cetera, then an ICT uh, solution will have to be looked at. And detailed work in that regard has also been done. So in terms of the request for information, if we can move to the next slide. So um, that has been done. Uh, we've, uh, we, we, the, to, to, to support the DOD, uh, we, we've done a request for information. We went out to the market to, to align uh, the best practice integrated uh, solution. The RFI was commissioned uh, the, on the 28th of March, 
Uh, it is advertised and it closed on the 26th of April. We received 16 proposals. Um, the bid evaluation committee uh, subsequently evaluated the bids, linked it to the criteria that was uh, determined, and then um, three bids were then determined to be compliant in terms of the terms of reference of the RFI. The compliant bids were submitted to the DOD. Uh, sorry, if you can stay on that slide. The compliant bids were submitted to the DOD um, in July 2021 to be incorporated into their final user specifications. Uh, this is critically required from the DOD so that we can then start with the borderline infrastructure project uh, to cost it appropriately. Uh, if we can move forward to the next slide, thank you. This particular uh, slide just gives us a conceptual model of cross sections um, and, and the terrains and landscapes as determined by the site clearance process. It's just a typical kind of model uh, that shows how uh, the borderline fencing will look and, and some of the solutions we can look at. Um, we, can, we can indicate here where this lightish brown, where the servitude requires to be re rendered, the type of agricultural fence that one is looking at, and then the barriers as well near the border post that is equally depicted. If you could move on to the next slide. Thank you. So this is the process that we've undertaken thus far to support this particular process. We've been quite active. Like indicated, the provisional site clearance certificate has been issued. There's an array of town planning processes which is required for any particular development has been done. The site identifications, uh, the establishment of appropriate land use rights, compliance with uh, legislative requirements, town planning uh, requirements, uh, the determination of encumbrances uh, that has to be re removed, and then um, uh, restrictions, et cetera, that may pose uh, uh, or impediments to the development. Um, so so the, 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 the provisional site clearance currently meets the legislative and environmental requirements. Uh, however, we would require the needs assessment to then um, finally determine the uh, the land availability, if it's equal to the requirements as required by the DOD. Uh, I've covered the request for the information phase that has been done already. And then we're going to, once we get the, uh, the needs assessment as approved by the Department of Defense, as indicated in the phase two of planning, that has been awaited. Then we're looking to engage in ESA to register this as a bankable SIDS project and uh, the timeline that is indicated as three to five years then can be uh, fast tracked in terms of the fast track uh, ESA processes. So once we get those needs assessment, we will start working with ESA to, to register this as a strategic infrastructure project. These are just indicative project costing that we've put together. Uh, and we, uh, 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 we estimate that this particular project uh, in terms of uh, the planning, the design and the construction of the, 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 the borderline fences, patrol roads, as well as the ICT um, solutions will cost us over 1.3 billion rand. As I indicated, the, the, the construction period will be fast tracked once we register this as a SITS project and we will continue to engage the relevant parties uh, uh, accordingly. Chair, we, we would like for you to, to note our presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. All right, uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Uh, Minister, do you want to make a comment before I recognize the colleagues? Uh, yes, yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I just want to uh, inform the committee that what we need urgently is that we have done the request for information 
uh, we have submitted to the Department of Defense the options available as soon as we can get the preferred options from the Department of Defense, we can start the process of one, gazetting the borderline fence, which is over 3,000 kilometers. We, we have so far uh, did site clearing for about 1,800 kilometers, but we need to start the process. And then uh, we need the, the approval of the specification from the Department of Defense, then we will then package the, 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 the project as a bankable project. I will then further gazette the borderline fencing project as a strategic infrastructure project so that it can qualify in terms of the Infrastructure Development Act of 2014. It then qualifies for a shortened uh, a procurement process. Uh, because we, we, we are in a crisis situation with hardly any uh, decent border fencing across our country. And so it is very, very urgent. So I will just make an appeal to uh, the Department of Defense to, to approve the specifications so that we can run with it as soon as possible. The last comment that I want to make is on the first part of the project, which is the, the REM project. Honorable members, it's a it's very serious problem that we are sitting with. The, the expense and what, and what government is currently paying for the, I'm just trying to get my notes here. Yes. Uh, currently, Chairperson, from what I could read in the report is that the, the non-function uh, functionality of the first floor of the one military hospital has got a complete negative impact, financial impact, uh, uh, on the Department of Defense. Um, as the costs have been incurred, you know, since 2011, uh, to outsource medical services uh, that cannot be delivered from one military hospital. The outsourcing cost uh, due to the outstanding work now amounts, and this is just between 2012 and 2016, the Department of Defense spent over 1.085 billion rand. So the sooner we can attend to, to these matters, uh, the better, and and I would really like to ask the the you know the, the support of the committee also, so that we can find long and lasting solutions. But I will make further comments based on the questions from the honourable members. Thank you, honourable chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, minister. All right, colleagues, uh, the, you, can you also touch on the Jesuit bearers so that we conclude the, your presentation? Jesuit bearers. Hey, person, just on the Jesuit bearers, we were not asked to, to prepare a presentation on the Jersey bearers, but we can provide uh, information to the chairperson um, maybe before the uh, sometime next week, we okay. can bring another presentation back. But because it was not part of the request, we didn't prepare for that one. I know, thank I understand, you. Minister. No, thank you so much. We, we can uh, delay uh, that part until sometime next week. All right, colleagues, uh, the department has concluded uh, presenting, presenting on the items we asked them to present on. Right. Uh, Dr. Kamete, is your hand up or is it an old hand? No, Chairperson, thank you. It's the new hand. Um, I wanted, I have uh, General Lidwaba, who's responsible for facilities, to comment on the first part of the presentation on facilities, um, to comment on total um, facilities management. And then um, Major General De Villiers to comment on the specifications for border safeguarding so that members have the whole picture when they uh, engage. Thank you. 
So you want to choose what you want to comment on? Not really, but um, I just I, in the hour can I, ask, to no, can I ask members? Can I ask members to comment? Colleagues, can you comment on the presentation of 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 of, of the Department of Public Works? Um, Mr. Murray, so let me, let Murray, you had your hand up, but let me start with Chabo uh, uh, Mutle, whose hand was up before you. Uh, Mr. Mutle, then Murray. There is Samantha uh, um, Graham. Uh, I don't. Uh, Graham Murray. Graham Murray. Um, She's Graham Murray. Uh, is, <laughs> yes. Is, but not is she a member? Uh, she's a member of the uh, other portfolio committee, the DPWI. I, I thought it's Mares wife. Yeah, all right. Keep it uh, in the family. Keep it Tuesday. in the family. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, no. Th 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 thanks, You're chair. starting rumors there, I think. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Chair. Am I audible? Yes, you are. All right, no, thank you very much, Chair. And uh, my apology for joining in late. Um, normally, the electricity goes off around five and it comes back uh, around seven o'clock. But I managed to hear the presentation from uh, the Department of Public Works. I've got a uh, few questions. One, they speak of uh, uh, the specification that must be approved by the Department of Defense, is in it that uh, 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 the Department of Defense in this uh, particular case is the end user? Are they, are they not supposed to be the one who gives the Department of uh, Public Works the specifications uh, in a manner that uh, they, they prefer, not the other way around, not not the Department of uh, Public Works drafting the coming up with specification and expecting the Department of uh, uh, Defense to to approve it. Uh, and that process supposed to be started at the level of the Department of Defense and be submitted to the Department of uh, Public Works for implementation. I just want clarity on that as to who's who. And se second, secondly, Secondly, I've been have them uh, touching on. Uh, I know they've touched on uh, 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 ramp, uh, but uh, I mean their their explanation for their failure is not uh, it's not uh, really convincing, because if even if you go outside a ramp, the challenge is that the department is facing as a result of the failure of the Department of Public Works, not only at one mill. You go to two mil, uh, we are sitting with the same problem where, where a contractor is appointed by the Department of uh, Public Works to also revamp that uh, particular hospital. The timelines are not met. They are not adherence to those, the project has been running for quite some time uh, to date. I'm not sure whether they've concluded or not, but the last visit that we did there, uh, the officer commanding raised a number of issues as complaint. And we, we even went to say, to ask the, com uh, the, the, the command officer commanding there to say, are you not part of the, uh, the project steering committee because you are complaining as if uh, you are not uh, part of the project steering committee. Uh, and in fact, public works is implementing on the behalf of the department. Therefore, the department must have an upper hand. They must be able to push them from time to time. Maybe if they, they can explain to us, take us into confidence, what is it that uh, uh, is challenging them in terms of implementing this project that uh, they are supposed to implement on behalf of the, the, the Department of D D Defense timelessly? cost-effectively uh, and delivering this uh, 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 milestone uh, within the, the, the project uh, timeframe. If they can just uh, uh, explain that to us, 
what is the what is the real challenge and i think uh, chair right. uh, also also okay. the department uh, mr mare thank you very much uh, mr mitle uh, thank you very much chair much appreciated uh, thank you very much minister and your staff for the presentations um, it is obviously very frustrating that one cannot get the the submission by the department of defense so for them to to now in a in a like a piecemeal way uh, try to respond to to only the things that they want to respond is actually not helping us at all we want to have a, a holistic picture of everything but let me just start there, there was mention made that um department of of uh, of um, public works will go on with the normal work at one military hospital and as from uh, 2014 onwards they say the capital work on especially the first floor uh, will be the responsibility of defense work formation can they get a and they've indicated that that project will run until 2023 uh, can they get a, give us an indication of that cost uh, i i have not picked it up straight maybe it's there i've just missed it if they can do that i'll appreciate that very much then on slide five i just want to ask it, it's clear there that uh, the report implicates both DOD and DPWI senior officials. Um, uh, in that first point, uh, have, have they started with that process um, to approach the state attorneys? Uh, I know the target date is only 8 September, which is next but, week. So, but sorry, I just want... Sorry, Mr. Mare. Who, who, sorry, sorry, Mr. Mare. Yes, who, sir. Who, who are you asking? Uh, is that uh, the, the, the the minister's department and whoever um, is uh, she she assigns to to answer that? Uh, All right. I, I don't uh, know the person's name. Oh yeah, okay. It's directed to D DPW. Yeah. Uh, DPW. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, because I mean, you know, DOD cannot really respond. Uh, they they should have had their own, uh, and and they must actually give us a total report based on what the the the, the Department of Public Works. Are present is presenting tonight to us so afterwards they must give us a full report in response to this so so i just that's the first question and then on slide 10 i just want to make sure for myself in terms of the background this there's, there's a a few um expressions there that is basically um you know talk about the the problems and what coronavirus has done and the hot spots and all those kind of things are those factual um, um, expressions? Uh, and if so, where, where can we get that, that information that is basically telling that, or is that assumptions um, of, of what is going on? Um, I just want to get that because that will determine also for us what to do in the department. On slide 11, I, in terms of the border management authority, uh, they, they put in there the role of the Department of Defense. Um, as they under, maybe they must just tell us in terms of how they understand the De Department of Defense role in terms of the board, border management authority, because my information is the Department of Defense is not part of the of the BMA, uh, as the other departments might be. So how do they see the role of the Department of Defense? Because eventually they also indicate that the Department of Defense is basically the end user who must now determine you know, the, the, the specifications of what must be done. Whilst, as we understand it, the Department of Defense will do it basically as an agent, um, only provide the manpower and the service to, to patrol and, and secure the, uh, the borderline. But, but the rest is, 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 as I understand it, it's, it's not their responsibility and their role. On, on slide um, 13, I just want to ask where they refer to the and especially that second one on the border fence. What is the criteria and the characteristics of how this border fence must look and, 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 and what must its purpose be? Because the borderline fence that we have seen when with our oversight was a spectacular failure. Um, I mean, it was certainly not a fence that could keep anybody on either side of that fence. So that, in my opinion, was a total waste of money because it, it is a total failure. So what is the characteristics of this border fence that they are talking about and the project going forward to this 1,800 kilometers? Because if it's, again, a, a fence like that, if it's, a, if it's not an electrified fence or, or a typical border fence, 
uh, I mean, we're wasting more money. Um, so we must be sure that we don't spend the money for the sake of spending the money, that it's a project, but it must serve its purpose. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, it doesn't help. I just want to ask in terms of slide 14, that red indicates that the, the whole Limpopo, Zimbabwe, uh, Mpumalanga border with Mozambique. But am I, am I not correct that the, the Kruger National Park is a, is a, is a cross-border park with no fence? So if that is the case, that is quite a substantial distance in both Limpopo and Mpumalanga. How does that fit in and how will that fence then look like if that is part of the project? Um, Chairperson, I think that is, uh, at this stage, it's very, it's just that, that is my point that I just want to raise and want to get clarity. I would have loved to ask more, um, especially on the fence itself, but uh, I'll leave that for, for our other colleagues. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Raider and then Mr. Mafanya. Other place. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chair, I, I'd like to to just yeah, perhaps take two angles to this, to, to, to what's been presented. And I want to appreciate the presentation and, and the forthrightness uh, thereof. But we must never forget and we must never lose sight as a committee that this um, issue revolves around a hospital for those that are members of the South African National Defense Force. Um, and I'm not convinced that I can see a way of getting us to a point from here where we have a completed and usable hospital. Um, now, Department of Public Works is saying, well, you know, that ball must now pass across to, to the Department of Defense because the, the, the project was devolved to them in terms of an agreement. Um, we haven't seen the agreement. We also haven't seen the, the forensic report where the, that, that, that is contained in. But I want to see kind of, you know, a, a plan going forward. How, how are we going to end up fulfilling our mandate and making sure that we're looking after the well-being of our soldiers? So what's the plan going forward? And, and if, if, if I can just get, if, if Public Works wants to say that's entirely in the realm of, of, of defense, then please say so and on the record say, that's now all the ball is firmly in defense is, is, is caught and, and we can we can get them up on that. Uh, and then, Chair, I'd like to insist that we get the Department of Defense to come into us with a plan with uh, landmarks or, or, or goals that uh, they've detailed and let them then give us a time frame. You know, X, we will be at X stage by X date. We will be at Y stage by Y date and completion will be done on, 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 on such and such a date. Um, I want that commitment, Chair. As a committee, I think we deserve that commitment. Um, and, and as the, the Defence Force members who serve our country, I think they also deserve that, that, that same commitment. Um, in terms of the uh, what went wrong uh, aspect of looking at this, at, at this matter, I think that we do need to uh, get a better way of getting a response. Because at this stage, uh, you know, I think re I really think Department of Defense have us here. And if needs be, Chair, uh, we may need to request that the Speaker um, and the um, Chairperson of the NCOP issue a subpoena on behalf of Parliament and actually subpoena the information that these people can come and give account for what has gone on. And I understand that there's now a forensic investigation that needs to happen and so on and so forth. That's going to take time as well. Uh, there must be accountability, absolutely. But I do think that this this uh, committee needs to be needs to have some oversight over that accountability as well, and not just leave it to a pure HR process. Um, I think we as a committee need to need to have that power. Chair, I do want to okay. also talk a little bit about the the famous or the infamous fence. Um, and indicate, you, you know, we had very interesting presentations last week in this in this committee. Um, for those that weren't on the committee, it was uh, from some security tracking companies that, that spoke about some of the cross-border issues that are happening um, and how things are being smuggled across, particularly the, the Mozambican border, but, but across all of our borders. Um, and, and I do think that we need to 
to get an idea in terms of the the fence that that, that we're talking about, what is the the the, the, the bigger scheme of things. What's the plan? And I think Mr. Murray mostly covered what I'm saying, but you know, offenses can only be one part of of what the plan is, and there really needs to be um, you know monitoring of the fence uh, and and preferably monitoring of the fence that doesn't involve someone standing there physically and, and keeping two 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 human eyes on it. Um, if, if we can have some sort of an alarm fence or or something. Uh, a barricade certainly, so that people have to perform those parking exercises, like you showed us on the WhatsApp group last week, Chair. Um, but you know, more of an idea of where, where we're moving to in terms of getting this this thing, so that it can actually work for the people of South Africa. Um, so, yeah, echoing Mr. Marais' request, please, can we have details of, of what the fence is going to look like? But more importantly, how does it fit into the bigger scheme of things? And perhaps again, Chair, that's an unfair question to ask the Department of Public Works. Perhaps that, that question rests more firmly on the Department of Defense, if only we could expect a reply. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much. Um, I will recognize uh, Mafanya just now. Mr. Mare, can you guide me on uh, Samantha Graham Mare? Um, I see uh, she has raised her hand. She's not yeah. a member of the committee, neither is she an alternate. I know uh, she's she not public works, but I don't want um, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, the lines between public yeah. works and the defense to cross. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, I, yeah, she's a member of parliament. She's a member of the Portfolio Committee on, on uh, the Public Works and, and Infrastructure. Um, and I don't know how the committee has been, the meeting has been set up, um, because clearly they were invited to, to attend. So uh, as a member of parliament, um, yeah. She, uh, she probably can ask I questions. Certainly have, I certainly have not uh, issued out an invite to all members of parliament or, or, or at least to a portfolio committee of public works and, uh, and infrastructure. I, I don't want uh, uh, the public to think that um, I invited them and I don't give them the opportunity to speak. Um, so, all right, I, I don't want the lines to cross. There's public works, there's DOD, uh, public works portfolio committee, public works portfolio committee and the, and the department of, uh, and, and defense portfolio committees. So, or rather the joint standing committee on defense. I don't want the lines to cross. Uh, it would be, uh, yeah. So Samantha, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I would hear what you 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 why you want to speak and not reserve that for your own uh, portfolio committee. But let me hear Mr. Mafanya and uh, Mr. Mafanya. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Minister, in the previous encounter with the DOT, there has been issues discussed around issues of projects. Now. The, the DOD had a, a feeling that, uh, not a feeling actually, they were objecting to the quality of work that the, the Department of Public Works does. And then they felt that they could do better at a lower cost. And uh, we, we were supportive of that because it was more a cost saving measure. But we, we, we are not expert in terms of evaluations. Now, there was that, uh, that, that sentiment around the issue of the quality of work that is done by the Department of Public Works, where, where in the Department of uh, Defense felt that they could have done better uh, in terms of projects that are, are earmarked for the Department of Public Works. So also, I would like to, I would like to know, or we should be abreast to the terms of reference uh, in terms of your MOU with uh, the department so that we are abreast with issues so that when you say you request information or what options are available in terms of projects that has got to be, to be done by yourselves or the DOD, we should also be in the know because also there are matters of expenditure on all of those things that are not consistent with the work that is done either by both the Department of Defense or the Department of Public Works. So I would like to, to get some clarity in terms of that. Uh, Chair, thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mafanya. Uh, Ms. Uh, Graham uh, Marais, uh, 
why must I grant you the opportunity to speak in this meeting? Sorry, Chairperson, I was under the impression that we had been invited to the meeting, um, but um, if you feel that it's not relevant, um, I just wanted to raise a couple of issues around the RAMP project um, and ask some uh, questions with respect to the two departments. So did you receive an invitation? Um, it was posted on our portfolio committee WhatsApp group, so um, I was under the impression that the um, invitation had been extended to our, our portfolio committee. Okay, let me just check with the secretary. Secretary, did you extend an invite, an invite to the department to the portfolio committee on public works and, and infrastructure? No, chair, it wasn't. Uh, I don't know how it landed in that um, WhatsApp group, but I didn't. Okay, no, it's fine. Let us end it at that then. No, okay. Okay, so I, uh, my apologies, um, uh, Samantha, that um, for some reason you thought you were invited. In actual fact, you did not extend the invite to uh, the Portfolio Committee on Public Works and Infrastructure. So we want to leave it at that for now, right? Colleagues, having said that, and uh, may I then invite, may I now invite the minister to um, uh, respond or to reply? Minister? Thank, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I will make two general comments and then I will ask the department to come in with some of the detail. On the first uh, question by Honorable Tabu Mutle about the specifications. The, in 2019, government was reconfigured and the Department of Infrastructure was then um, established. And it was gazetted uh, by President Ramaphosa in August of 2019. And the mandate of the Infrastructure Department is also linked to the Infrastructure Development Act of 2014. And uh, linked also to the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating uh, Council. So there are a number of, of existing uh, infrastructure structures that we also account to and, and, and report to. There was an agreement between myself and the previous Minister of Defense that DPWI must go out and go and test the market to see what solutions is available in the market. So we, together with the, with the, with the, 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 the then Minister, um, we drafted uh, a request for information uh, and then it went out uh, to, to uh, the public. And part of the agreement was that DPWI will gather and collate all the information. And like Mrs. Saban has explained earlier on, we then had agreement that we will now present to the Department of Defense various options for the department to choose from. But the mandate to provide the infrastructure, to procure the infrastructure is still with DPWI. But the Department of Defense must be happy and they must sign off on the specifications of what kind of border fence uh, will, 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 will assist them to complement their work, their constitutional duty in terms of the constitution to, to protect our borders. So, so that, is, that is how that has happened. And, and that report is also available if the committee wants us to, to the joint committee would like us to come and give you a briefing and give the information about what is in the market. It's very interesting what's come up, uh, technological led, um, the, the, Examples from around the world, and, and so that is how we we have worked together with the Department of Defense. I have also, when the new minister came in, uh, requested a meeting with the new minister to give her a briefing on a couple of issues related to infrastructure. Now, uh, Honorable um, Bafunyade. The, the issue here with the Department of Defense, the Department of Defense has written to the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure about two years ago, that they want to take over the mandate 
of providing infrastructure and doing repairs and maintenance and everything they want to do themselves. And yes, there are some complaints where there were poor performance by DPWI. Again, I had explained to the previous minister that in terms of, I think, a section 92 or 93 of the constitution, it is only the president of the country that can uh, a delegate or that can remove a, a, a function from one department to the other department. So if the Department of Defense want to get that mandate, in terms of that section of the constitution, they must go right to the president or go to the president and say, we want that infrastructure mandate to come to the Department of Defense. We're sitting with a similar challenge with the Department of Home Affairs. In the Border Management Authority Act, uh, the role and function of Home Affairs is to coordinate border, uh, um, border infrastructure. But also the Department of Home Affairs also want to do their, 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 their own uh, infrastructure. Um, and, and again, the same advice was given to Minister Mutsaledi to approach the president to assign that function to the ministers that, that, that have requested to, to do so. so. So that is where we are. Uh, I have tried to meet with the new Minister of Defense, hopefully when she's back, we'll be able to set up a meeting. And this is one of the issues on the agenda for discussion with the new Minister of Defense when we are going to meet about the various infrastructure projects uh, future projects and current projects that in, in the pipeline with DPWI, and we can work together to find out, to, to find a solution. But there is the legal mandate, which we have to also consider in, in, in all of this. So um, the, the uh, in terms, Mr. Ryder, also the question around uh, the, um, the plan going forward is a DOD or as a DPWI, it's both. Um, the Department of Defense will finally approve the, or, or select one of the options that, that we are going to put before them. We will then procure, and I've explained the, how we want to do it, that there's no money in the fiscus, and therefore through Infrastructure South Africa, we will package it into a strategic infrastructure project we will gazette it as such, and then we are then able to go out uh, to, to the market to go and look for the funding so that we cover all three 3,000 kilometers of border fencing. So it's not either or, uh, Mr. Ryder, it is both departments. Thank you very much. I'll give over to the department to fill in some of the other details, um, honorable chairperson. Thank you. Chair, before we do that, if I may. Can you get all the responses and I will come back to you. Chair, sorry, it, it's, it's relevant to this part of the meeting. What? No, 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 no. I, I, can you get all the responses? I will come back to you. Just please note your question. I know it's a follow-up or you want to correct. Um, uh, Not at all a follow-up, Chair. If I can then draw your attention to the chat group, please, if you can have a look at my comments there, please. Oh, chat group. Okay, it's fine. Um, uh, All right, um, colleagues, um, we, the minister was asking uh, some addition uh, from uh, the members of staff. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, Chair. And want to thank the minister for the responses made. Minister dealt with the areas of policy, particularly the question raised by Honorable Motre and uh, Honorable Mafanya, there were more of the policy questions and thank, thank you, Minister, for the response. So as colleagues will be dealing with the technical information uh, before us, we'll sort of share I mean, between line functions on how best to deal with the questions posed to us. And uh, in that regard, Chair, in that regard, Chair, just hold the line. The line for me. I was cutting. In that regard, we are going to deal with uh, 
questions as follows. The issue relating to total facility management will be dealt by Nishi Sharma. The issue relating to consequence management will be dealt by DDG Isaacs or the uh, SCM. The issue of uh, refurbishment, RAMs, and headquarters on borders will be dealt with by uh, DDG uh, for construction project management, uh, Mr. Mukoto Batu. And uh, DDG Race will deal with the issues of borders. So if I'm to sort of sum up uh, a chairperson on the areas questions raised by Honorable Mutle uh, regarding the issues of uh, DPW failures all around, uh, timelines, etc., the CPM will deal with that. And uh, the issues of uh, DPW costs on the TFM, advocate niche as I indicated, the issue of consequence management, uh, which uh, Mr. Isaacs will deal with, and uh, the issues in the slide 10, where we will be dealing with the issues of um, uh, uh, expressions and uh, whether these are effectual or not, what can we obtain from this? And uh, I should think uh, this met met matters of assumptions uh, DDG race will deal with. I should think that's how we'll share the questions across uh, the questions read by members. So. I've indicated the guidelines on how questions uh, will be responded to by my colleagues. These are technical information my colleagues can come in that order. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson and the Minister. Okay, in that order. Hello, Mr. Tobin. Were you not inviting uh, allocating um, items to colleagues to speak on? I was, uh, I mean, uh, inviting my colleagues to come in in that order on their areas. I thought so too. Colleagues, come in that manner. We can start with uh, Advocate Nishi Sharma. You deal with the issues of uh, TFM, consequence management, Mr. Isaacs, refurbishment, REMS, headquarters. That's, it will be a DDG for how the process came about. So I'm giving to the colleagues to proceed. Apologies, Honorable Chair and uh, colleagues and Minister. Um, I'm Nishi Sharma from the Facilities Management Unit. Um, unfortunately, I may not be able to respond to all the queries, uh, save for, I think there was the Honorable Member that queried the amount for the TFM uh, for the total period of three years. It is an amount of uh, $188 million for the duration of TFM for, for uh, one military hospital. Just to highlight, the total facilities management contract is in place for maintenance only. It does not include any major repairs or refurbishment. Um, and uh, it is currently, as mentioned, covering the aspect of preventative and reactive maintenance on the facility, both uh, for, sorry, for all disciplines, mechanical, electrical, as well as building works that are also covering the critical um, assets within uh, the facility as highlighted in the PowerPoint presentation, Chair and uh, Honorable Members. Okay. And uh, the next uh, uh, official to, to speak. Mr. Mtombeni, are you sure the, the people who are allocating these areas to are in the meeting? I'm sure that the, the, meeting? the next one is uh, Mr. Isaacs uh, on the area of uh, consequence management. Mr. Isaacs, are you in the meeting? Good, good evening, Chairperson and members, and good evening, Minister. 
and colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, with regard to the consequence management, the um, authority seeking correspondence has been prepared uh, for authorization by the uh, Acting Director General. He would have signed it today, but I accept that it will be done tomorrow, uh, where after the briefing uh, notes will be provided by our legal services. Um, it's anticipated that the process would be finalized with the appointment of the um, presiding officer as well as the initiator uh, by the end of, uh, or by the 8th, uh, in terms of the plan. Thank you, Chairperson and members. Thank you so much. Uh, any other? Thank you, thank you, Chairperson, um, honourable uh, members, minister, and colleagues. On uh, uh, the issue of the uh, construction projects, uh, a number of uh, of projects were were uh, discussed um, during the. Can see that you're... Sorry, can you? Sorry, sorry. Is it possible to set your your video on? I see your car is by the seaside. Thank you, Honourable Chair. I do have a, a challenge with the the uh, video. Um, I, I will I will try to to work on it uh, as I move along. Okay. Sure. Thank you. A, a number of of uh, questions were raised in today's session around the the, the number of projects uh, discussed. There was a a project uh, on two military hospital that was uh, mentioned. There there was a, a a project on the uh, substations for the uh, upgrading of the SNDF headquarters. And these projects uh, uh, have different reasons uh, why they were delayed. And uh, with respect to the two military hospital, the, the project uh, is completed and it is awaiting a total facilities management. The uh, delays in that project were around the decanting strategy. Uh, that was uh, put in place uh, where the project was planned to be uh, implemented in a phased approach because the building was still being used uh, during the construction phase and uh, there were challenges when the contractor was on site as far as that decanting plan to work around it uh, but we are we are now completed uh, with regards to the uh, SNDF headquarters we initially reported uh, that uh, uh, this project uh, in includes the repair and renovation of about nine uh, power substations along the Mozambique RSA borderline. And then uh, uh, the project uh, has reached a sketch plan stage where the designs have been approved. And uh, now that the designs are approved, we are waiting for further directions from our client uh, Department of Defense uh, with respect to providing funding and giving us uh, a way forward for the next step, which is the construction phase. Um, we, we also are working on a, a number of initiatives to improve on our performance as far as delivering of infrastructure is concerned. Uh, we will be happy to provide a report uh, on some of our improvement plans. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Um, does that conclude all the replies um, on your side, uh, Mr. Tobin? Thank you, Chair. We're still, having, uh, we're still having a DTG for Denise to deal with the motors around the waters. She will come and finalize from that side with a team from BTM. Over to you, DTG Race. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mtumbeni. Uh, it's Sasa Siben again. Um, so basically, I think Honorable Minister Dalila has responded to, to some of the, the um, uh, 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 responses to the, the uh, borderline fencing in terms of the integrated solution. Just to enhance on that in terms of the specification uh, uh, that has been developed um, or, or required, we, we don't have a specification from DOD currently 
and, and this is a critical requirement. It, it, it impacts on the security of the country. So I think uh, we were proactively as DPWI trying to assist in this regard. And like Minister indicated jointly with DOD, with the ministerial level, as well as an administrative level, uh, the, the DOD form part of the evaluation and the, uh, the, the, the specification committee. So, so they are partaking in the initiative at, at the administrative levels as well. In terms of the uh, scientific, in terms of the outbreak of coronavirus, the question from the honorable member, at this stage, it's based uh, mainly on media reports as well as uh, public outcry. Uh, we do not have scientific uh, uh, gathering of information in, in this regard from the BMA. Um, uh, so I think uh, ministers covered me on, on, on most of the aspects. Uh, the aspect in terms of having the, the looked at best practice, et cetera, like I indicated in my presentation, uh, that was done uh, both at the town planning phase as well as via the RFI process. We do have uh, examples of best practice uh, borderline integrated solutions, which includes the fence, one, one reference um, that, that uh, one was looking for was the, the fence with the USA-Mexico border, for example, and we've looked at various other best practice examples. Um, the other aspect is looking at best practice ICT solutions. We have uh, detailed uh, examples in that regard that can be presented. It was presented at the DPWI Portfolio Committee as well, in, um, and, and it, it's, it, it's, it's quite impressive in terms of what is available uh, out there. Um, and then in terms of the Kruger National Park, and I think it was the Limpopo borderline, um, I think that as well, if we could uh, respond formally, but my understanding in terms of the fence that would be required, there would be an agricultural fence. And we, we cannot um, have any fences uh, electrified. Uh, and this is in terms of the, the, the human rights requirement, and there's, a, there's an act of governing in that regard. Therefore, the solution that has to be provided um, has to be one that, that, that uh, averts um, an electric fence. And therefore, the, the one is leaning more towards the ICT solution with cameras, et cetera, supported by that. Um, in terms of surveillance uh, and, and that type of uh, equipment and apparatus. And that then also supports uh, the, the, the monitoring of the fences that would be have to be done via an ICT solution, but controlled and monitored specifically by the Department of Defense so that they could react accordingly. Uh, and, and all of this is embodied in that integrated borderline. Um, solution. Uh, with regards to the MOU, the MOU is specific to the, the, the borderline uh, solution. Uh, and and uh, if it's going to be converted to the protocol agreement, it will then also align to that. In terms of the way forward on how we, we look at the general uh, relationship um, and, and in terms of the services we provide to the DOD, that we in development with a service level agreement supported by service delivery standards that will outline the, the, uh, the, the, the service we provide uh, relevant to infrastructure with the associated timelines, et cetera. That is in development uh, at the moment. Thank you, Chairperson and Honorable Members, Honorable Minister. Okay, all right. I think that takes care of all the, the, the questions. Uh, colleagues, we uh, chair, chair, we have one which is not answered. The issues of uh, devolution of um, one mill hospital since 2014. I'll give it to DDG CPM to answer because it was also a key question. If they can deal with that, I should think that it will conclude responses on our part. Okay, thank you. Chair. Infrastructure. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair, and thank you, uh, DDG um, Tombeni. Um, 
the, the, the report that uh, was provided earlier uh, gives a view over the, the ramp uh, project, in particular that uh, it is currently under uh, this investigation uh, aspects. And most of the, the issues are covered in, in that uh, report that was discussed earlier. Uh, uh, the part that I am going to then give only covers uh, what was intended of the the ramp uh, project um, in its inception. Is that the the project was initially uh, executed by the department, as uh, was explained before, and uh, uh, it also included the refurbishment of the first floor pharmacy and some operating uh, theaters. Uh, However, uh, during the, this project, uh, there were elements of a change of scope, which were required by, by the client. Um, and we, the department could not uh, proceed with that project in that current form. And it was then agreed uh, sometime that the, the project must then uh, uh, have a different form. And a new project was then registered to cover all the needs uh, of the client. This is sometime in, uh, in uh, 2011. And uh, while uh, the project was in the planning stages, uh, a decision was then taken in October 2014 for the project to be uh, devolved uh, to the Department of, of Defense. And uh, that was then uh, done and uh, signed off the respective accounting officers of both the departments. That is the information that I have at this point in time, that from the year 2014, the department was not involved uh, in the project. Thank you. Okay. No, no, it's fine. Uh, that was in 2014 when the function was devolved uh, from public works to the Department of Defense. But just a while ago, uh, the minister uh, uh, <clears throat> brought uh, to our attention section 97 of the constitution, which talks about a, a transfer um, of a function or power uh, from um, uh, one member uh, of cabinet uh, to another. And uh, she said, as from 2019, with the creation of the Department of Infrastructure, so, um, and the Department of Infrastructure having, I mean, being the responsible for uh, government infrastructure. Now, if you were to uh, devolve and uh, a function from public works to any other department. She mentioned the other departments that are calling for a devolution. And then she says, um, uh, only the president can reassign a function. That is in terms of section 97. How does that uh, agreement uh, that you signed in 2014 uh, now sit with this um, uh, uh, position that the minister spoke about? Hello. That's a, that's a good question. Uh, Very valid. Colleagues, um, uh, Tom Bini. Thank you, Chairperson. I should think on this matter, the minister was articulating to it to say that uh, she's busy arranging um, a, a bilateral engagement with uh, the counterpart in defense, uh, basically to un iron out that issue informed by the current proclamation so that uh, even the issues of uh, 2014 in terms of devolution can be dealt with. It's a matter which is pending an engagement. I can sort of uh, amplify what minister was indicating, but she was trying to sensitize the matter to say she, she's seeking a meeting with her counterpart to deal with that particular matter. Once the matter is finalized, it will be sensitized of the outcome so as officials will be able to implement the policy position. 
Thank you so much. Yes, the minister is in the meeting. Uh, uh, it's, it's critical that we get a, a response uh, on, on this item because um, we, we the, the discussion today is about uh, uh, one military hospital uh, refurbishment. And we don't know where it sits. Um, is it with DOD or with public works? That's all what we want to know. Remember, we're saying this thing is costing us uh, millions of friends, um, uh, up to about a billion rand uh, from uh, 20, 2012, just on outsourcing services that would have been performed uh, by the military hospital, especially the, the first floor, whose theaters were you know, uh, uh, removed, and the pharmacy removed, and uh, so basically leaving the military hospital uh, with very little uh, to do when it cannot perform uh, such specialist uh, function. And they also lost uh, professionals who could not sit in the military hospital because uh, they need to exercise the skill. And uh, when they realize that the, the skill is no longer needed in the, in, 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 in the military uh, hospital, because all those services that were, were, they were performing have since mm -hmm. been uh, undermined by the, the first floor, they left. Now we want to know what is the, situation now uh, where, where who's and who, who do we hold now to account on the ramp uh, project is it DOD or, or public works honorable chief if i may come in yes ma'am yes yes minister yes um honorable chair and honorable members as you can see this is just a complete mess it's no other word to describe it but uh, according to the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, they have now uh, taken out a three-year contract until 2023 to deal with what they call um, reactive maintenance, whatever that's supposed to mean. I think the best is, uh, and as you know, as a minister, I don't interfere in procurement but we can make the contract available to the joint standing committee so that we can see exactly what is the role and responsibility of DPWI and the role and responsibility of the Department of, of Defense. But it does not answer the question, when are we going to fix the first floor of Military One Hospital? Even if that function was devolved to the Department of Defense in 2014, then the Department of Defense must tell us what have they done to fix uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the first floor. So there is now, uh, you know, a chairperson for my reading of the situation that the one is blaming the other, but we need to get accountability and we will get the accountability when we can examine those contracts. Now, this devolving of a function happened in 2014. Obviously, it was illegal. You can't devolve a function unless you follow section, section 97 of the constitution. So that's another problem. And the, the current ones that I'm dealing with is the request of the border management authority who want to also take over infrastructure. The Department of Defense who want to take over infrastructure and my response is being standard. It cannot be done unless we follow that section of the, um, of the constitution. But also chairperson, there's absolutely no guarantee that yes, the poor quality that DPWI is providing and there are many projects who are like that, overruns, uh, double the money, over time, it's not delivered on time, but there's absolutely no guarantee that should this function be given to the Department of Defense, that we won't have similar uh, poor quality standards like we've seen with DPWI. 
So the answer is not to devolve, the answer is to fix the systems. You need to put systems in place that can detect and prevent what we've seen now. And that is why through the infrastructure South Africa now, we are doing project preparation for every major project. Because if you do it upfront, you are able to de-risk the project upfront. And that's why, you know, we even went to National Treasury uh, to ask for another 1.5 billion to help us to do project preparation on these big infrastructure projects of government. Because our country is littered, littered all over the show chairperson with unfinished projects, overruns, money finished, but the project is not done. So I don't think that the devolvement of, of a function will solve all our problems. Uh, for me, what it will happen is that the, 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 the slice of the cake and the slice of the tenders will just be shifted around, but I'm not sure that we're gonna get uh, proper quality also. Thank you, Chairperson. No, thank, thank you very much. Uh, we obviously need um, <clears throat> some answers to this. And uh, maybe when we meet next, uh, the, the Department of Public Works and, um, and, and Infrastructure and the DOD would have met to sort out um, the, the, this mess. Um, this project is uh, an unmitigated disaster. Yes. And, uh, and, and this hospital, uh, it was the United Nations uh, selected it, um, you know, for, you know, to provide health services to uh, people deployed um, uh, on peace mission, uh, on peacekeeping missions, that if for whatever reason they need healthcare and they happen to be in the countries or countries next to South Africa, and uh, South Africa is accred accredited as level four hospital and therefore they will receive care from there. Two, it, it was once a, a part of the country that it hosted a president of other uh, countries uh, who came here to receive a medical care. But the same cannot be said um, uh, of this hospital. Uh, the entire first floor uh, was, you know, uh, was taken out. And that first floor minister uh, used to accommodate 12 theaters, yes. an intensive care unit, a high care, a high care unit, casualty department, and the laboratory uh, uh, services, and, um, and, and, and part of the administration. Uh, of the hospital was on the first floor. And uh, with this thing that happened, uh, you know, taken out, uh, you know, led to uh, the department losing, uh, you know, doctors and nurses. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because they can't apply a craft there, you yes. know? And uh, so now, forcing now the department to outsource services to private hospitals and we pay huge cost. And uh, so it is not a saving measure that we are paying uh, service provide, I mean, uh, service providers. It actually drain our own fiscus. The sooner yeah. we resolve Okay. is one military hospital it's 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 it remains is a hosp is a one military hospital in name only and uh, all that was 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 there is just disappeared you know so that is our uh, major uh, concern minister hence we thought this matter must feature prominently on, on on the agenda of this committee and get the two ministers and the two departmental officials to talk to us about what they are doing about it and also the way forward is the way forward that we are not uh, clear whether the two departments are clear on how to move move more forward, especially now that even the location of the function um, is still uh, not clear. Uh, like you are saying, Minister, uh, it was illegal. That's according to what you are saying that the function was devolved. 
Now, if the function was devolved illegally, uh, what does that mean in a, a country that is governed uh, uh, by rule of law? I don't know. We all swear allegiance to the constitution, to uphold the constitution and other laws. And the next thing we find ourselves uh, uh, moving in the opposite uh, direction. That's my concern. And uh, it's a pity that the department uh, came to this meeting not prepared to talk to us and uh, on the ramp issue. And uh, yet they are spending a lot of money on it. And um, uh, the, the acting uh, director, secretary for defense uh, wanted to mislead the committee to pretend as if he knew nothing about uh, this ramp. They didn't know who commissioned it. When it, we, were, we were told she was in the meeting that is was commissioned by the chief of the South African Defense Force. She was in the meeting when the SecDef was actually, the current SecDef was actually saying that she was, uh, she has written to the current chief of the, of, of the South African Defense Force to escalate the report to her so that she can then share it with the Department of uh, Public Works. Now, be in a meeting of parliament and, you know, uh, you know, uh, misrepresent uh, the, the, the true state of affairs. I don't think if, if that was not uh, a serious offense, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It then goes into the fitness of the people that we appoint to act as, 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 as in, in, in certain positions. And uh, I can't say uh, uh, any stronger than this, and uh, except to say that uh, this meeting has not been a success, but thanks to the Minister of Public Works who honored uh, her appointment with us, uh, was very uh, sincere in her presentation. And she appears to be uh, willing to find a solution uh, to, to, to this problem. And uh, she has even gone to an extent of applying consequence management. The department that has been sitting with this report from December last year is now a year later. We're not hearing anything of the sort. They received the report in April, they're now actioning. They're saying, ah, oh, our staff are implicated. Look, let's call them to account. Let's hold them accountable. Let's, let's, let's charge them. And this, so that they can state their side of, they're not even disputing uh, this report. They're not saying we're not party uh, to the decision to uh, appoint the, the consultants to uh, investigate. They're saying, ah, this report is like this. And, uh, and therefore, and uh, the staff, the implicated people must come to answer. They've done it, but we're not hearing that the department has done anything, if anything, and they, they are passing back, you know, and they, you're calling for information is not available. And they come, they want to select what they want to talk to us about. And they still call that accountability. I, 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 uh, colleagues, we have said it all. And uh, I think we must close the meeting. Uh, it's clear we can't take this discussion any further than this until we have gotten the side of the department. Radar uh, wanted us to even suggested that they be subpoenaed. I don't think we have reached that stage and um, let's give them time. Let's not consider subpoenaing them. And uh, the minister is abroad, the SecDef is abroad, though they knew that the item was up. If they wanted us not to put the item, they should have advised us at least last week, the previous week to say, look, we're not available the following week. Could this item uh, be either brought forward or shifted uh, uh, to some time later? And um, whilst there's still enough to adjust the program, they must say it on the committee. They, this is, I said the committee determines the agenda. If there has to be any change to the agenda, that must be reported in this meeting and mm. comrades and the colleagues agree to any change. So that we all know that this matter is no longer on the agenda the following week, uh, mm. we still need to another day. So this thing of thinking that they can call the chair 
outside this meeting a day or two before the meeting and say, oh, as if they've just woken up to that reality that they're not, they not going to be available. It's, it's I, 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 I just cannot accept it. Chairperson, I, Chairperson, I want to support you. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. you have summed it up very well. I think we are incredibly disappointed and Dr. Gumeri must convey that message without any, any excuses. Um, uh, this is totally unacceptable. And I want to actually say, you know, that we, maybe we're not at a stage of subpoena, but we must write to them that if they do not respond, then we will go the route of subpoena. We don't want to go that route, but if need be, we will go that route because they are playing with us. They are disrespectful to parliament. They are undermining parliament and it's totally unacceptable. If needs be, we can, we can uh, charge them for, for, uh, you know, for, for, for this game that they are playing with us. And Dr. Gomere must tell them that story. There's, there's absolutely no excuse. And I fully support you in all our actions that we need to take 100%. Uh, thank Dr. you. Can, can you offer that word? Yes, can you, uh, can you your, your, your final comment? Why don't you give these people a yellow overalls? <laughs> 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 Why not a blue overall? <laughs> no, I mean, these people, they don't belong where they are. People, they cannot just waste our time and think that we don't, we don't see what is happening. The, the minister, when, when I said we must go back to uh, one meal and go and see really, really what had happened with those millions, you are going to give these people their clothes to wear. Okay. I think you said. No, thank you very much. Um, I said we can't take it any uh, further. Okay, uh, sorry, on a point of order then. On a point of order? Let me take the point yeah. of order. Okay, so I have, I have with me the joint rules of parliament, uh, which govern the rules of this meeting. Um, and obviously it's probably too late to go back now, but I don't want a precedent to be set. So section four, part four of the joint rules is entitled rules applicable to both joint meetings and joint subcommittees generally. And under that heading, rule 48 says that, and I'm going to quote it, any assembly or council member who is not a member of the joint committee or subcommittee may be present at a meeting of a joint committee or subcommittee. And then it goes on to say that the member mentioned above who is present at the meeting of a joint committee or subcommittee may speak on a matter before the joint committee or subcommittee, subject to Mr. any Rager? reasonable restriction the chairperson or co-chairpersons may impose, but may not vote except when the vote is cast as an alternative. So, Chair, I, I just want to set the, make sure that we don't set a precedent. Uh, the Honourable Graham Marais would have been well within her rights to participate uh, in tonight's uh, discussions. And we just set that right for the record going forward. Further to that, Chair, I want to welcome the Minister's openness. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Ryder. Yes, Mr. Ryder, can you listen? Can you listen? On, on that point, I thought the matter has been settled. She said she was under the impression that they were invited. Uh, to the Let's leave it at that. Let's not try to, you know, uh, to, trick, no. to trick me. And um, no, listen, listen, listen. You don't budge, you know, rock up in any meeting of a committee and raise a hand. It's always by listen, listen, not listen, listen, listen. It's always by arrangement that you, if, if that there would be members who come and they want to present, and only the chair may, and it says that in that rules, may grant them permission to speak. But how would the chair grant them permission to speak if they had not, if he had not been given prior information of their participation? Let's leave it at that. You are Chairperson, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to leave it at that. I'm going to ask you to refer that further up the line, perhaps to the Chair of Chairs for, for, for a decision. Wait, my man. You are out of order. All right. I'm not, Chair. I believe you are out of order. Okay, no, sure. Let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. Uh, it's 50 50. It's fine. I, I'm not offended by it. All right, colleagues, I think we've come to the end of, of, of the meeting. Colleagues, um, Minister. Before that, there are minutes, colleagues, to consider. Let's consider the minutes, but the minutes. But uh, I wish to thank the minister. 
and uh, for her for the, her participation uh, in in this meeting and um, it has uh, certainly enlightened us on a number of uh, of issues and the uh, minister and the team thank you very much and um, uh, they say a goodbye to us thank you thank you minister thank you All very right. much okay colleagues uh, we have now excused the department of public works and infrastructure Let, let's then deal with the minutes Uh, Mr. Raider, were you in the meeting uh, of the 25th of uh, November? Uh, I, want him to punish, I want to punish him uh, by being the first person to move the minutes. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure I was at that meeting, Chair. Uh, <laughs> if we can just settle the screen down. Okay, sure. Okay. All right. Let's 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 deal with the correction first. Please just go page by page to see. Page by page, right? All right. Let's move to the next page. We have done with the attendance. Let's go to the most next page. I'm looking for corrections to the third page. Don't move very fast. Right. Okay. Let's go to the fourth page. And uh, to the fifth page. Right, let's go to the last page. Oh, it's last part one, all right. Okay, let's go to the next page. Oh, that was the last page, all right. Colleagues, uh, at this minute, the true um, uh, record of our discussion uh, previously. Can I get a mover? Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, accept your punishment. I was in the meeting and I'll therefore move for the adoption of the minutes. Your, your sins are pardoned. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the minutes have removed. And then it's again. Thank you so much. Kabu uh, Mutla seconded the minutes. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a fair reflection of, of the truth, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. The second minutes. Sorry, Chair. There was only one set, Chair. There was only one set. Yes, Chair. Are we now at the end of the meeting? Yes, sir. Oh, can I say <laughs> farewell to the colleagues until we meet again uh, next week? Thank you so much. Thank you very much yeah, for your yeah. time. It has been a yeah, fruitful I, see, I, I see Dr. Gomeri is still online. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. I also okay. uh, 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 say thank you. Th thanks uh, to them as well uh, until yeah, we meet again. All right. Thank colleagues, thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Uh, oh. Yeah, thank you very much. Good night. What about Shalem? What about Shalem? Yeah. Hey, man, Why is Shalem been fired? Shalem, we've been fired. Because I'm not.